welcome back to another Redline Weekend. Today we are featuring a custom Thunderbird. Pretty excited to do this car. I really like this body style. I like the bulging hood. Got the side pipes. This car is a little bit rough. We're probably due, you know, to work on something a little bit more difficult than we've been doing. So that's fine. So this is what's happening today. Let's start off with a couple punch marks. How about? Hiya! Decent. Decent. This one goes right through the fuel tank. Ooh, that one wasn't very centered. Might give us some problems. Might give us some problems. All right, here comes a pilot hole. It's looking real good. Let me kick it up to a medium-sized drill bit very carefully. Don't get much more perfect than that. Do our other side. This one's not going to be as nice. That side's actually pretty good too. I didn't hit the base. It's very close. But I didn't hit the base. Because it's all about the base. Gonna give this a little bit of a pry here if I can find a good spot. It should just pop right apart. Or not. Or not. Try the front. There we go. Once you got the one side, the other side usually comes out pretty easy. Ugh, that wasn't easy at all. He lied to us. Oh no. <laughs> We've suffered some collateral damage to our axe. Everything's fine. We'll just cut that out. We'll just edit that right out of the video. Ooh, we've got some pubic hairs in here. Ugh. And it looks it and it feels it. Ugh. Well, great. So, axle's bent. It's my bad. Get our interior out of here. Oh. Oh, it's dirty. All this is going to need is a little soap and water. It'll clean up real nice. Now, this guy's got a crack in it. Um, I think I have a spare one, so I'm probably not going to use this. I'm going to throw this back into the spare pile. Just because I think our car is going to be a little bit too nice to have a, a cracked windshield. So this will be an emergency replacement donor windshield for something down the road. So we're going to use something else for this car though. There's our body. Everything's looking real good here. I'd like to take this opportunity to file these posts flat. And we will drill them out for our screws. Boom. Oh, that's not bad. Not too bad. All right, same thing. Do a pilot hole. And then we'll move up to the appropriate size drill bit for the screws. got the self tappers here so you just thread these in and they'll make their own threads doesn't get any easier than that alrighty it's stripping time I've been getting a lot of comments that have to do with what kind of strippers what kind of honestly what kind of everything everybody wants to know so to just save the trouble of putting everything in a video um, what I did was I made kind of a supply list in the bio for every video and then any questions you have about what I'm using it'll be found in there that stuff works so good I suspect this car is going to need zinc it's pretty banged up that's okay I've been kind of been wanting to do 
a nice zinc job and and a T-bird has got a real nice flat body, so it should be a lot easier to work on. It's got a nice big open canvas. Should be good. Should be a real good experience, I think. It's my favorite part is just peeling off the old paint. Ah, yes. Every time. How much zinc do we have? The main body of the car is probably going to be good. The edges is what I'm worried about, like on these fender lines. We will see. I'll give it the regular die cast resurrection treatment and see how it all ends up. Alright, I've got the whole body stripped. Here, I'm going to go ahead and take this to the sink, give it a bath with some hot water and a wire brush. Try to clean out all the little specks of paint I may have missed. And I'll be right back. So here's the T-Bird. It's looking pretty rough. I got it in the wet sanding tub here. Or my pie plate. <laughs> First thing I want to do is give this thing a wet sand down to 400 and I want to see what shape our zinc is in. Looks pretty rough. I mean, you look at the trunk. If we do have to zinc plate this car, we're going to have to sand it anyways just to get it smooth. So the zinc has got a nice even layer to uh, bond to. So if you're aiming for perfection, like I try to be, um, you're going to have to sand it anyway, so might as well. See, like this here, these spots, these freckles, this is smooth to the touch. It's just oxidized, so that's going to show up through the paint, and it's going to be real gross looking, especially on this trunk. We're going to be doing a root beer brown, right? So now we're going to plate this car. We're doing it. I know a couple of my subscribers right now are like, yeah, finally we're going to plate something. And we're probably due. I've been on easy street long enough, I guess. So for now, I just want to get rid of any bumps that might be on the side of this car. And there's a few. Just by the looks of this thing. You can just hear it crusty sounding. You don't want to sand your body line off so take some care and go around it. The zinc process should help us fill in some of those pits and then we sand our zinc smooth hopefully the pits get filled. Might, might have to do it in a couple steps. Blend the pits into the rest of the car. This is another one for my Sweet 16 collection, so it's got to be gorgeous. Alright, that is as good as it's going to get at the moment. Alright, so here's my little zinc plating setup. Pop this off here. So I watched a lot of different videos on this. And it seems like there isn't really like a proper way to do it. You know, everyone's pretty well doing the same thing but there's variances like in my I don't know this probably isn't a gallon it's pretty close so in here I've got plain white vinegar it's not distilled vinegar it's just five percent plain white vinegar and I have about three quarters of a cup of Epsom salts in here to make it a little bit more conductive and I've got my little Heltronic mini DC benchtop DC power supply to give me some volts. And I got this big ass marine anode. This is something that they would normally bolt onto a boat. And the, having the anode there magically helps the boat not get corroded so bad. So I've been using that and when I bought it it was advertised as a zinc anode but after I looked it up I looked up the composition of it it's actually a zinc alloy 
So I'm not 100% sure if I'm, you know, alloy plating these cars. It, it works pretty well the same, but it seems like the, uh, the finish on the car is harder with this alloy, which would make sense. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, which makes my job harder because it's harder to sand and harder to make look really nice. So that's the anode I have for now. And I'm going to order something else, so I think it'll make, make my life easier down the road. So we're going to hook up our positive lead to the top of my anode. Just got the little alligator clip up here. And then our negative is going to go on the post of this car. One thing you have to be sure of is that your car is absolutely perfectly clean. I've seen guys use brake cleaner, I've seen acetone, you could use spray nine, any kind of heavy degreaser. You gotta get that car spotless. Absolutely spotless. So I'm gonna put this in here, like so. No, I'm not using a bubbler. I know you guys are gonna be all over me for that, and I've I've done my research, so don't, don't hate on me too much just because I'm doing something a little bit different than what you've seen. So we got our body in here. And we're going to turn this bad boy on. And I got mine set at 1.3 volts and 360 milliamps. And this thing works fast. I've had this anode in this vinegar for about a week and a half. So my, um, I forget what they call it. The electrolytes in here are through the roof and it's no nonsense plating. And we'll do this for like five minutes and this thing's going to be plated and it's crazy and it's awesome. Let's look at it close up. So in five minutes, I'm going to pull this car out and it's going to look like it's got a, a coating of gray primer on it. And that's our zinc plating or our zinc alloy plating, if that's possible. And we are going to sand that smooth and see how it looks. I'm not going to go into the whole science behind this because, you know, reading's for rich people and I'm just kind of a get a general idea of it and then experiment and see what works the best for what with what you're doing. So the links are there if you guys want to learn the sciencey part of it. I've already done my reading, so this is where we're at for now. So I'm going to leave this in for a couple minutes. I'm going to pull it out and we'll have a look at it. Checking back in with our car. There's that great primer look I was talking about. I'm going to leave it in there for a little bit longer just to try to cover up a little bit more of that oxidation. And then we're going to take it out, give it a quick wet sand, and see how it looks. Alrighty then. She's been bubbling away for a little bit now and there. I think I'm about ready to take it out. So there you go. That's about 10 minutes in the old plater. Pretty smooth result so far. I uh, just want to. I don't have steel wool. That would be ideal for this. So I'm going to use my 1500 grit. We'll just see. See how we did here. So after some zinc plating and a little bit of light sanding, this is pretty much what we ended up with. And it looks pretty good. I wish it was better. If you remember how bad our trunk was, this is quite an improvement. So I want to do a little bit more wet sanding before we go to paint here. I might refine the old zincing process a little bit to try to get better results. I think the biggest part of my problem is that the anode is uh, an alloy and that's um, kind of making things more difficult than they need to be. All right, so we're going to give the car a polish before we go to paint. Get her looking as good as we possibly can. Okay. 
looks pretty good. Still got some little pits, some little baby pits. Yeah, maybe next time we'll leave her in the, the old zinc tank a little bit longer. Whatever, it's a learning experience. I've only done maybe five red lines now, four or five. I don't know. I don't know. So we're using a brown root beer spectra flame from redlineshop.com. There's our hardener. Give this a good mix. Got a little filter here. A little 190 mesh. Just to strain our paint out quick. Okay, our car is back from paint, and now I gotta put a vinyl top on here. So I brought another Thunderbird. This guy is kind of a, just a template so I can see exactly where I need to tape off. So that's what we're gonna do here. I'm noticing a lot of differences in some of the paints. So this brown paint went on super runny. I was painting this car exactly the same way as I was painting the Cougar and I noticed that the paint is different. It's going to seem like a lot of tape but I got to get the subtle curves down here. So this tape I'm using is called Edge Pro and it's a little bit thinner and it's a little bit more kind of rubbery feeling than regular masking tape. And it's supposed to give you a lot cleaner edge. So let's see how it works for this. I don't want to screw this up. It's going to be something like that. And we can go paint this now. So as much as I like to live by the free pour rules, I'm going to have to start measuring out my hardener. I think that some of these paints, you know, they're so thin already. Just by using a little bit extra hardener is making them even more thin. And I'm having inconsistencies when I'm trying to paint. So, got to be mature about things here. And so we're going to do this quick and we're going to take this tape off. ASAP. That's when you're gonna get your you get your bleeding happening if you leave your tape on there too long. Alright, so my video is a little bit late getting published because this thing has been a bit of a basket case. I'll be honest. I can have problems. It's allowed. So I'm gonna snip these old wheels off. I gotta straighten out this axle. Or, or replace it. Stupid tire, think you're better than me? Uh oh. You guys didn't see that, but I just was tweaking this axle and it popped the little titty off the end of the thing now. So this bearing, ah, I'll have to go in the bag of mystery and see what we got here. Oh, that's our money shot right there. Good, 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 good. Axles. Maybe we'll spiff up this tail light. I'm going to wire wheelie this whole thing. I don't have 
an electro polishing setup yet so I can't go all bare metal on this thing but a little bit of a budget channel here right now so we do what we can here at Diecast Resurrection try to get a good result for you watch your ears That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to go give this a wash and I'll BRB. I got a Molotov. Don't look up Molotov. The FBI might get you. But I got this little acrylic pen I'm going to use to just freshen up these taillights a little bit. I just want to freshen them up a little bit. It looks just fine. Just fine. This is our replacement windshield. The spare I had. So you can see it's a little bit scratched up. Nothing that's going to warrant any kind of sanding. So I'm going to just hit it with the polishing wheel. And it should make it pretty perfect. Quite easily. You wouldn't be amazed what you can get done with uh, just rubbing compound. Like you can do anything. There's a couple little fluffies on there from my paper towel, but that is a pretty pristine windshield. I like it. It'll sure be nice to get this car done. Like I said earlier, it's giving me some problems. But this is a learning experience for me. I've only maybe restored like four red lines now. And... Each one has a new set of problems. That mad boy on there. Been having fun doing this. I enjoy making videos for you guys. It's a nice looking base. I don't know how much footage you guys saw of me doing the vinyl top on this thing, but it turned out so good. Like I highly recommend that paint to anybody who's doing anything like this. Nice minty interior. This bad boy on here. Carefully. Little teeny turner is going to take a break, and we're going to do it this way for a bit here. My zinc plating needs a little bit more, um, I need a little bit more practice on it. I'll admit it. There's a couple little body flaws. The paint went on pretty nice. I'm going to be working harder. I'm getting the bodies more flawless going forward. Get this clamp down nice and snug. Beautiful. All right, we're done. Let me get my little turntable and we will have a look at this bad boy. So here's our custom T-Bird. It looks pretty darn nice. Check out that vinyl top. Went on fabulously. This magic black from Redline Shop. It looks like a vinyl top. All I did was uh, turn down the PSI on my gun a little bit. Came out so nice. The paint worked good. Um, if I were to do this car again, I would have left it in the zinc plater a little bit longer. Just to, I don't know, fill up some more gaps, I guess. But other than that, nice looking car. She's a beauty for the shelf. I should have another video out in a couple days, so look forward to that. And thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Um,